Hello and welcome to the Aero-V engine assembly video series. I'm Joe Norris at Sonics Aircraft LLC. In this series of video segments, we are going to walk through the assembly of an Aero-V engine. We will be following the sequence called out in the Aero-V assembly manual. The manuals get updated much more often than the video series. So if there is a case where the manual and the video series disagree, your manual that came with your engine is the guide for you to follow. But in general, all of the steps that we have in the manual will be shown in the video series. We hope you enjoy the video series. We hope you enjoy putting together your Aero-V engine. And we look forward to seeing your airplane flying. Now we're going to turn our attention to our pistons and cylinders. When you receive your Aero-V engine kit, the pistons and cylinders will come with the pistons already installed in the cylinders. But you are going to have to remove the pistons from the cylinders and remove the rings from the pistons so that we can check the end gap of the ring. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to push this piston out of the cylinder and we'll set our cylinder aside here for just a second and we're going to remove the rings from the piston. Now the rings are fairly brittle so you want to be very careful when you remove them. I just grab the two ends of the gap with my fingers, spread them out evenly and the ring will come right off. You don't want to twist or kink these, they will snap. They're very brittle. So just very carefully spread them with your fingers till they're wide enough to come around the piston. And then once you get them off of there, you're all set. Now we'll set our piston aside for a second. Bring our cylinder back in here. Now that we have our rings off of our pistons, we're going to individually insert them in the cylinders and check their ring gap. Now the piston rings are actually marked so that you insert them in the proper orientation. Right next to my thumb here, you'll see a little mark that says top. That will go on the piston so that this side of the ring is towards the top of the piston when we reinstall it on the piston. So I'm just going to insert it in the cylinder in that orientation. I'm actually going to use my piston just to guide it down there so we get it in there nice and straight. Now we are going to actually measure this gap between the ends of the ring there as it's installed in the cylinder. The tolerance is a minimum of 12 thousandths and a maximum of 22 thousandths. So what I've done is I've taken my uh, feeler gauge and I've preset my 12 thousandths and 22 thousandths feelers so that I can just use it as a go no go gauge. So I'll look at that and I'll get my 12 thousandths feeler. I'll run that right through that gap. Fits very nicely, no problem. I'll take my 22 thousandths and that will not fit. So we know that we're within our acceptable range of 12 thousandths to 22 thousandths. Pull it out. I'm going to turn the cylinder over and I'm going to do the same thing with the ring at the bottom of the cylinder. On new cylinders, it's probably not going to make much difference. But if you happen to be overhauling an engine and using used cylinders that you may have rehoned, uh, the cylinders could be worn a little bit more at the top than the bottom. That's a very common thing. So uh, we always check the ring gap at both the top and the bottom. Again, we've got our ring installed in the cylinder and squared up with our piston. Take our 12 thousandths feeler gauge, easily goes through the gap. 20, 20 thousandths, 20, or 22 thousandths, it will not go. So we know that our ring is within tolerance. Well, we've got the cylinder bottom here. We're going to do the same thing with our top compression ring. Install it. Square it up with our piston. Once again, we've got our ring gap. We'll take our 12 thousandths feeler gauge. Goes right in there, no problem. Take our 22 thousandths. Does not go. So we're good to go. Flip our cylinder over. Orient our ring. Slide it in there. Use our piston to square it up. There's our ring gap over on the side here. Our 12 thousandths. Goes right through there, no problem. Our 22 thousandths will not fit. So we know that our ring gaps are acceptable and we can reinstall our rings back on our piston. Make sure you get them in the right order. The second ring is actually a little bit fatter, so it won't fit in the first ring groove. And again, I just take these very carefully, 
spread them by hand, set them down over the piston, get them down to the proper ring groove, and they set right in. Take my top ring, make sure my top mark is up, spread it out, drop it down on there. Our rings are reinstalled. You'll want to uh, orient the ring gap so that they're not lined up. So we'll kind of swing one around to this side and one around to that side. And we'll be ready to put this uh, piston back in the cylinder. Our cylinder upside down. We're going to just take a little bit of oil and pre-lube that cylinder wall. This is just kind of a basic assembly step here. We will also lubricate these again when we assemble the uh, cylinders onto the block. We're also going to take our piston, a little oil on my finger, we'll drip some of that on there and just rub it around and get it in those ring grooves. And everything looking good. Once again, check to make sure our ring gaps are oriented properly. Wipe my hands off just a little bit. Now we're going to use our ring compressor. And we'll just put that around our piston here. We want to leave a little bit of the top of the piston exposed so we can align it with the cylinder properly. And once we get our ring compressor on there, just tighten it down. Our piston's ready to go into our cylinder. Now on the top of the piston, there's actually an arrow. That arrow, when we install the uh, piston uh, cylinder onto the engine will go towards the flywheel end of the engine so we can uh, pre-orient that a little bit. You can turn these in the cylinders if they don't get oriented properly while you're installing them. It's easy to re realign them so that's not a big deal but it'll save you some trouble if you think ahead a little bit. I'm just going to use my hammer handle here. Just give that a little bump. Right down in there. I'll remove my ring compressor. Now I'm a little bit deeper than I want to be. You can see that uh, my piston pin hole is a little bit deep in the cylinder. I'm going to work that real easily back up until I can push that piston pin clear because when we install our pistons on our rods, we want to be able to push that piston pin through there by hand like that. So now I'm aligned properly. That piston's ready to go in that cylinder. Just repeat that process with your other three cylinders and you'll be all set to assemble your cylinders onto your engine block.